Hey guys, welcome to another edition of our online newsletter. Um, as you know, we've got limited time. Usually we only have enough time to speak about our winners. And we've got a few things to speak about today, a few things to cover today, and we're showing some video footage. So we're going to change the format up a little bit. Rather than going through all our winners over the past six or seven weeks, um, I'm going to pick a couple of horses uh, that'll feature, um, you know, and uh, we'll play some video footage also for you. Um, we'll also go over our time at the sales. Uh, we've bought three cracking yearlings so far. It's been a hard year in terms of buying and finding value, and 99% of the buyers out there have basically followed suit and just spent more because the last fellow spent more. We've continued to play the patience game. We've continued to stick to our, our budget, where, where our successes come. And uh, although it's taken us three sales to buy three horses, I could honestly say that this is the best start we've made in terms of our buying bench since um, Elite Thoroughbreds came into play. So we have really done well buying, and I mean really well. I could not be more excited about our, uh, our prospects, um, you know, and our babies coming through or that are going to be coming through the system. I uh, still got a few to go, so I'll be going to Melbourne and the Magic Million Tarf yearly. I'm sure we'll find what we're looking for, but uh, so far, very good. Um, we'll also show you some footage of one of the one of these horses we've bought, uh, one that I feel uh, and Gary as well feels that uh, it would be the first horse we'd point to in this case uh, if an owner was to ask. Um, you know, you'll get to see Gary's interview uh, as soon as we bought her while it was fresh on his mind. Um, and you'll also get to see him point out what he likes about the horse, her best attributes. And if we can fit it in, we'll get a bit of her walking around. Um, otherwise, you can see the full video on our website, uh, elitethoroughbreds.com.au. It uh, goes for about two and a half minutes. So, um, by all means, you know, if you like what you see, uh, given the snippets we show you, jump onto the website, have a look at the full video. Next week, we should have all the information up on her. Uh, the PDS is uh, in the process of getting ready. So, um, it's not too far away. So, let's get, let's get started. The two horses I've picked to feature, um, one being the obvious Tester Shadow, He's won three of his last five starts. Um, of the two he didn't win, he finished five lengths behind multiple group one winner, Lucky Hustler. And uh, he ran second at his first attempt over 2,000 metres. Um, he was just beaten by a better horse, you know, a horse that's going on to big and better things. So um, he was very unlucky not to win four from five and, and win at his first attempt at 2,000 metres. Uh, however, you know, you're happy when your horse can break its maiden. Uh, but uh, this, this fellow has gone above and beyond expectation. Uh, he's won over $550,000 so far. He only cost me $50,000 a buy. And um, he hasn't even won a black type race yet. So there's, there's plenty to come. The second horse I'll be pointing out is Sizzling Gaze. Uh, she broke her maiden her last start in a course record of sorts. She's had five starts for a couple of placings and a win. She's only run one bad race of her five starts, which was the race prior to her win. But uh, the fashion in which she won was ultra impressive. Basically burnt the candle at both ends, spent a lot of petrol getting to the front and still had a kick and won convincingly. So we'll get into that now. I'll show you some footage um, of Tessa Shadow and Sizzling Gaze. And uh, we'll move forward with, uh, um, you know, showing you the uh, this particular yearling we're featuring and going over our time at the sales. As they race into the straight now, further back to Disgraceful, hugging the fence. And Allegri is looking for clear galloping room and finding it. Footy Fan is the leader. He's there to be gunned down. Disgraceful, perfect weapon, closing off the inside. Tester Shadow, the outside. Ziggy Willie runs on. And Allegri is starting to stretch now. Tester Shadow and Disgraceful. Allegri has got the last shot at them. Tester Shadow in front from Disgraceful and Allegri. And Tester Shadow gets in. Tester
There's a run there for Cawthorn's Power, if good enough. Arcane comes on, Carlid next. Hearns Oak trying to get through and Embley down the outside. It's Tester Shadow at the 200. Cawthorn's Power and Nick away the inside. Arcane and Carlid can't get to them for the moment. Tester Shadow fighting hard under the claim. Leads by a length to Cawthorn's Power. They won't get it. Tester Shadow went all the way. What a length and a half, Cawthorn. Team Arakaba the inside. Allegria gets to the outside. Dubio's being ridden for luck between them, and then came Randicki. Testa Shadow hits the lead. It's a length clear from DIC. Allegria strides up on the outside. Marakaba threading the needle. Dubio's not in the hut. Testa Shadow still in front from Allegria. Testa Shadow's kicking from Allegria. Testa Shadow neck in front. Here's the post. Testa Shadow, good game performance. In midfield, sizzling gaze crossed and got to the front from the housekeeper who's racing second at the 800 metre mark. Lady Carelli third on the outside of Super Chase. It's being followed then a couple of lengths away by left hand Louis from Woodgrove Mountain. And then came fast and loud midfield on the outside with the black cap. Over on the inside, Texa Cody being followed by the Garrett Strategical May Gravillia. A long way back was hit the town from San Bernardini and Dad's Girl last of all. Sizzling Gaze the leader up to the 400 metre mark and pinched a bit of a break from the housekeeper. Then Super Chase and Lady Corelli called upon gets to the outside but they've got to get to Sizzling Gaze. She straightens up a big leader. Super Chase comes out to give chase to this leader now. Super Chase out after Sizzling Gaze. Sizzling Gaze and Super Chase. Sizzling Gaze holding Super Chase. Sizzling Gaze in front and sizzling gaze too good for super chase one at a length and a half Tech so there are two horses to follow tessa shadow speaks for himself of course uh winning three of his last five starts and and finishing second at his first attempt over 2000 meters prior to his last victory um he's just a horse that's tough and tenacious and uh, there's not many horses that win $550,000 and haven't won a stakes race yet. So I do believe there is still uh, uh, room for wins in terms of uh, his record. Um, you know, keep following him this preparation, uh, in particular next preparation. Uh, he's just racing so well. And as long as he's racing well and recovering as well as he is, um, you may see him continue to win as he is. So um, a little bit each way uh, on uh, Test of Shadow, every time he goes around, it certainly wouldn't be a silly thing to do. Uh, but Sizzling Gaze has just been ultra impressive. She's the one for me I'll be looking out for because we've got her early. You know, we've got her after a first win. We had suspicions that she was a nice filly. But to do as she did that day, burn the candle on both ends, it practically took 800 metres to get to the front, as you would have heard uh, the commentator say, uh, as she had the wide gate, and then still had enough over the 1350 to kick uh, that last two furlong and get away from her opposition uh, and do so in, 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 in a course record time of sorts um, is just very, very impressive. She is spelling now, so if she can go away and put on that much needed 20 or 30 kilos, sky's the limit for that girl when she comes back. So she's one I'm particularly excited about and a horse I would definitely keep an eye out for. Now, on to the sales. It's basically taken us three sales to find three horses, as we've mentioned. Um, but I don't think we've made a better start uh, in terms of our buying bench and our, and our yearlings uh, than we have this year, ever. Um, so uh, that's how impressive I believe these yearlings are to date. We've still got a few more, and of course there's a few more sales, so uh, you know we'll buy what we need. Um, we always end up finding what we need, but uh, you know we're being careful about it, as we do every year. It's taken a lot of patience this year as people are following the person before them and spending more money, but we don't need to do that. We'll just continue to pick the eyes out of the sales, uh, keep in between that fifty and $100,000 bracket where uh, so much of our success has come. And um, I'm sure the last three or four that we're about to buy are going to be just as nice as the first three. Now, there is one particular yearling, though, I would point my owners to if they were to ask. Um, she's a lovely filly by Stratum. Uh, I'm about to show you Gary's interview that was taken after we purchased her while it was still fresh in her mind. 
Um, she just oozes absolute class. She's bred to uh, compete at the top level and she looks like a horse that will compete at the top level. Uh, she's just a serious race horse. She's got the size, she's got the scope, she's got everything in the right places. And um, I haven't been this excited about a yearling in a long, long time. So have a look at this girl and um, Gary uh, basically going over what he feels her best attributes are. G'day guys, uh, this is a filly we bought at the uh, Classic Sale by Stratum. Uh, she's a beautiful, strong filly as you can see. And a good mare, no comment. Race is a two year old and she actually beat off, uh, of course I can, at um, Canterbury in a maiden. We all know that of course I can when I went, went on to win a group one race. So mother was a very, very serious racehorse. And um, I just love this filly's strength through a hindquarter. She's, very, she's a late foal, she's a November foal. But you can see by the size of it, she's quite a good, strong filly. Big strong hindquarter through, down to a Gaskins. Typical of the Stratums, long barreled horse, which is something we look for with the Stratums. Good legs, good, good uh, quality head on her. And uh, I think she's very typical of the horses that we've had that have had a lot of success by this stallion. So I think um, she's probably going to be a later type two year old, being that she's a late foal. There's no doubt she will race it too, and I've got a very, I'm very, very confident this filly's a very good filly. Well, guys, I'm sure you can see why we think so highly of her. Uh, we also found a Testarossa Colt and a Sebring Colt. Um, again, we're staying in between that fifty and hundred thousand dollar price range. Uh, we've had to play the patience game this year, uh, and it's paid off big time. You know, so uh, it's taken us three sales to find three horses, as I mentioned, but um, we haven't made a better start ever in terms of our buying bench. Um, and our yearlings so I can't wait to show you these yearlings on the open day but if you were to ask me this is straight out the girl I would recommend to my owners and I get asked a lot so that's why I thought I'd feature her in this uh, newsletter also you know we've still got shares in the uh, ready to run northern meteor filly guys don't take it lightly you cannot buy northern meteor anymore particularly a filly um, you know, you've got more of a chance of making money on a on a on a filly or a mare that's won a, or placed in a decent race than ending up with that one in a million stallion. Fact of the matter is, we're keeping a rather large share in her because um, I would like to retain her for breeding. Um, we all know how good the stallion was. He died prematurely. Uh, he would have been at the top of the standings as he was when he was alive. And even when he died for a couple of years, he was still right at the top there. And uh, we're still seeing all these nice Northern Meteors, you know, like Happy Meteor and Speak Fondly. Um, these Northern Meteors just don't stop. Uh, so don't take her lightly. There's only three or four shares left. Uh, we are staying in her. Um, and uh, particularly if you've got that interest to just dabble in the breeding a little, uh, that's where I want to head with this girl. Okay, so um, don't forget to look at her as well, by all means, because she comes highly recommended, and the breaker is just in love with, with this girl. In his words, she's as strong as he's ever seen, and she looks like a filly that would run through a brick wall if she could. She's that strong. So... Um, Look, the last time I heard comments like that uh, was uh, with another good horse. So uh, I don't take those sort of remarks lightly. So that's all we got for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I look forward to uh, speaking to you come uh, our next online newsletter.
Bye for now.